100% hands down. There's a lot of cat fighting, which we will get to that. Are you guys back together? Are you married? Some things that are probably going to be controversial. Fight and flight instincts, addiction, alcoholism, infidelity, with the history of all of this stuff has been privated. Those things don't just happen with no one having some bruises coming out <laughs> about are you gonna have more kids and who I am to him. Like, I get so emotional about it because grueling. I'm not gonna be, uh, yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it or whatever and he's generally like, hey, let's go get dinner. Like, and he makes sure we have a babysitter and it's been a wild ride. <laughs> first things first, if you are new around here, I love this one liquid stevia. I like it even better than anything that Starbucks has, mainly because I can't have the sugar. I wish that Starbucks would get their act together and get more sugar-free flavors. So this is the stuff. It's so good. So welcome to this video. I am fairly certain this video is going to be extremely, extremely long, but that's okay because it has been a long time coming. It is a much needed video that I have just in the last little while felt like I'm ready to film, ready to kind of get in front of the camera face to face and chat with you guys. And to be honest, I've gone through phases in the last little while where I'm like, I don't wanna be on camera. I, I go back and forth. So we're here. And this past week I asked you guys for some Q and A questions across like all of my social media platforms on Facebook. If you guys don't follow me on Facebook, you um, can definitely do that. And on Instagram and on YouTube. And some of you that follow me regularly may have kind of wondered why I even asked for Q&A questions because I have been super MAA on like a lot on like Instagram. I haven't really been around. So I'm sure it was kind of like, oh, it's really random that she's asking for these Q&A questions whenever I haven't even been like on my stories and stuff, which we will get to that. Also, I have had so little coffee in the last month, like no regular coffee, totally off of regular coffee, which might be a shocker, but it's true. Um, and this is actually a decaf Americano with just a little bit of almond milk. And then I added my stuff just because it's cold and we're having a little chat and I wanted something warm to hold. Mm, that's so yummy. I love it. So you guys came through with the questions for sure. Like I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a just like chit chat kind of video, which I think I want to get back to doing more of those. I used to do those. Um, like a couple of years ago, I did more chatty videos and I'm definitely heading that direction along with vlogs. It's going to be for this channel. If you guys don't know, I have two channels. This is like my main channel and then I also have a home related channel where I do lots of home organization and try to convince you guys that I have an organized house. So, <laughs> um, but this channel I am going to be posting a lot more on and there it's going to get a bit more real. That's the word I want to go with. I, it, I could put a lot of words on it, but I just want it to be more me and I'm, re I'm ready. I'm in that position to just share a little more of my life and that kind of thing. But, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to sit down and do like a chit chat video. This video, like I said, is gonna be long, so if you wanna grab a drink, it's gonna be a minute or an hour, not sure. Hoping, I cleared off a lot of space on my camera that it holds out for me and I don't have a dead battery and all of that. Um, so I debated on just doing a chit chat video, a catch up video, which I did do one um, a couple of months ago, especially whenever I started changing the direction of my content. I went through a really big phase of doing a lot of meal prepping, which I'm still going to be doing because we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that until I get to like questions that are related to that. But I decided to put the Q&A question out there and you guys asked a huge variety of questions. Like, we're probably not gonna get to them all because most of the questions you guys asked are like opening up a can of worms for each question. So I'm gonna try to stay on topic and stay with each question. So I'm not doing them in any order. I know in the past when I've done Q and A, sometimes I like categorize them together. I'm not doing that. It's just gonna be super 
random. So I'm going to pull up a couple air, like a couple questions and just start answering them and then we'll see where they go because I have a few other things that I actually want to talk about, but we're going to mix in the questions and all of that at the same time. Okay. This question is one that I get a lot, like through the years of doing YouTube and stuff, I've gotten this question a lot. And that is, how do your girls get along so well? So if you don't know, I have a five, six and seven year old. It is wild to even tell you or to even say that I've got children of that age, but five, six and seven year old, they're each a year apart, three girls, and they are actually beginning to hit a stage where there's a lot of cat fighting. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Like they are just getting to a scrappy age. And I, being a mom of, that I've never had these ages before, I feel like in the last six months, I've begun to like wonder how, where this is going. <laughs> are we gonna get back to like peace and harmony? No, I'm just kidding. They do really get along most of the time. They have been hitting a stage of a lot of very opinionated ages and also wanting their own things and then at the same time since they're so close in age and they're so connected at the hip they want each other to be with the other the other ones all the time so if like one of them kind of is independent and goes does their own thing it only lasts for a little while and then they all they feel like they have to be back together it's just it gets a little bit it gets a little bit crazy but i will say this I do feel like they do get along really well. It's just a lot of like petty little stuff right now that I feel like irritates the other one. And then we're, you know, trying to sort out arguments and all of that. But at the same time, they love each other so much they can't not be together. So, and since I homeschool, we are together a lot. So I think that's another factor is just learning how to balance all of those things, particularly in a homeschool family. All right. Um, another question I got, which kind of goes along with what I just said is, can you show how you are homeschooling your daughters? And yes, I think I'm going to do like a homeschool routine kind of video which not every day is the same because we are in lower grades i mean i have everly in first grade and then kylia and hazley are both in kindergarten together um and so these are grades where we're doing a lot of repetitive stuff a lot of simple things learning phonics um reading writing math I have multiple questions about the homeschooling and i can leave a link in the description box of this video for the website <clears throat> where we get our homeschool curriculum off of all right a fun little question is what is the hardest diy project you have ever done 100 percent hands down if you guys have been around since the um farmhouse days whenever we used to live out on in a well, like farm area um at one point the girls when they were little i had them all in the same room in three cribs well to do that on a affordable budget i bought three used cribs and i sanded them down and i painted them and it was terrible like if you have ever painted spindles or anything like that it is such a headache because the paint wants to run down the spindles and you've got all like ton of them with cribs especially three cribs um and just yeah i just let's just put it this way i will never paint a crib again if i don't have to because that was definitely the hardest that comes to mind i mean i have painted whole houses by myself i've done lots of diy projects which you guys know but that one I think took the cake. I actually think I got a couple questions on this of are the vlogs coming back? So I'm kind of shifting them to calling them day in the life. Um, so yes, they're coming back and I've done a few here on this channel. So, and some people get really confused because they don't realize that like I have more than one channel. And so then they're wondering, yeah, why you know where videos are and a lot of it you just have to scroll back through and you'll find them so i think i'm just gonna go ahead and tackle one of the big questions and the core questions related to this and that is the question are you and corey back together how is your marriage how is that situation and you guys have been really gracious because you've also said like don't share more than what you don't want to and obviously I'm not going to share something here that I don't want to share. So 
questions were, are you guys back together? Are you married? How is Corey? How are you? How are you faring? Especially with the holidays coming up. Okay, we're gonna see if this works. I moved my parking spot and then Corey called me and I got really waylaid. So back to what I was saying is that, so the answer to the question and I answered it kind of in my little life update video I did a couple months ago is yes, we're married. Yes, we're together. Yes, we live under the same roof <clears throat> and we actually have for quite some time now. Um, and if you are new around here, you're probably wondering why people are asking these questions because pretty much everything to do with the history of all of this stuff has been privated. Um, this, the first video that I ever put out was five years ago, something like that. And I was a very young mom. I'm still a young mom, but I was in a very, oh, I don't even know the right word, like vulnerable point in my life between what was going on, between having three babies right in a row. Um, there was just a lot going on. And so that first video, I know a lot of you saw and no, it's not on my channel anymore. So you won't be able to find it. Um, but I was crying. There was a lot going on. And this whole process has been going on for most of our marriage. And I'm going to go into some things that are probably going to be controversial. Totally okay. You can put your opinions below. Totally okay. Um, and a lot of this is based around the fact that I'm a Christian and I live my life by standards of being a Christian. And there went a Domino's car. <laughs> um, so all of that to say, if you've never seen any of those videos and you are totally new around here, um, there's been a lot go on in our lives due to my husband and some of the struggles that he's had in life and addiction and those sorts of things. And I want to preface this by saying not everyone is supposed to do what I've done. And I think that sometimes when people hear different stories of how people handle situations, they feel like that they're supposed to follow in those footsteps or they feel pressure of some sort, pressure is the right word, of some sort that they are supposed to like do what that person did. And that is just simply not the case. And I, I'm reinforcing that because there were times when I felt that way through the things that we've been through that I felt very like pressured to do it this way or do it that way or there's always lots of opinions of different people on what they think you should do and because a lot of these types of problems around addiction is touchy there are things that, and, and addiction, I'm saying that in a very broad statement because we've been through a lot. Addiction can include, obviously, substances. It can include um, infidelity. It can include, like, just so many things. So, so many things. And we've been through pretty much all of it. So, <laughs> um, but... It all really starts and begins with you when you are the person that is the loved one of someone going through those things. And it's kind of wild to me because back like years ago when a lot of these things started surfacing and I got, I got the question a lot like when I first started talking about all of this was, you know, you guys are you, you know, you haven't been married that long. Like, didn't you see some of this stuff before you got married. We got married very young, very young. Like we were 18. So <laughs> um it just is what we wanted to do and it, yeah, there was just a lot of things that weren't fully understood at that point in time and not in, even within ourselves, even within Corey, within myself, there was a lot of stuff that we didn't even understand about ourselves. So, um, 
But as these things unfolded, I really went on a like major search to kind of look for resources for people in my position, being the loved one of someone dealing with addiction, alcoholism, all of those things. Um, and I really couldn't find a lot. And I know that sounds kind of crazy because that it's so prevalent. Like addiction is something that ev it, it affects everybody. You probably, anybody watching this probably knows of someone that has dealt with some sort of addiction. And so I just, I felt a bit alone in that. And YouTube was a really great resource in the sense I was able to share some of the things I was going through. And then there was a lot of people there to say, you're going to make it, you're okay. And just to cheer me on. And from the bottom of my heart, all of you that have been here since that point in our lives or in my YouTube journey, maybe so, like, I just thank you so much because even to this day, I will get the most random messages from people just saying like, I was thinking of you, praying for you. I have no idea what's going on in your life now, but I just want you to know that you were on my mind. And that means so much to me and people that have been praying for Corey for, I mean, like I said, that first video was about five years ago that I put out, you know, you guys have been praying for him and cheering for him even in the midst of the crazy and it's been a wild ride and the reason I started out with the fact that this is not does not mean it's the road for everyone I made a decision and I made this decision more than once but I made a decision that I was going to stay with Corey no matter what um and I and along with that decision, I got a lot of counseling. Um, I have, well, yeah, at least four years of counseling um, through different counselors and not because I've had problems with counselors. It's just different counselors are for different seasons. And that's one thing I really encourage you if you're in a difficult place in life, don't feel like you can't have multiple people feeding into your life. In fact, one of my, I would call her like one of my spiritual mothers. Um, we had a season where I talked with her a lot and really gleaned so much from her. And I remember it was, this was last year. And I remember her saying like, I think you're getting to a point where you like our time is closing and you're going to have someone new come into your life and speak into your life. And it's just, I, I appreciate that so much because that has been my story through and through is that there's been so many seasons, so many seasons because it was going through having babies. It was going through different seasons of Corey's story, which I'm not here to tell his story. Maybe sometime he will tell his story, but, um, he, you know, his, his journey had so many different seasons. Some of that having to do with age, um, some of it having to do with just processing different things. So having different people for different seasons is 100% okay. And I think it's actually really healthy because you can sometimes get latched to one person and one person doesn't have all the answers or doesn't have all of the gifts or capabilities to help you through everything in life, especially when you are in a hard journey. All right, I gotta take a sip of coffee. So all of that to say, I felt called to stay. And I, like I said, I'm a Christian. I felt the Holy Spirit calling my heart to walk a very, 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 very hard road. Um, the hardest, if I can say it that way. And I'm like not sugarcoating, sugarcoating it. Um, and one of the reasons I'm not is because I know that some people watching this are going through something very similar. And I think a lot of times when there is marriage, I don't even want to say marriage struggles because to be truth be told, our marriage has actually been relatively good <laughs> beyond like the stuff that he has dealt with. Like we've always loved being together. We always loved like 
each other having each other in our lives and I know that Corey would say the exact same thing I want to say it's more of an addiction journey maybe something like that so walking through this journey um has been grueling I'm not gonna be uh, yeah I'm not going to sugarcoat it so I relate a lot to Job in the Bible if you guys don't know the story of Job basically Everything was taken away from him. His children um, were killed. His crops failed. I mean, like, his animals died. Even his wife was saying, like, why don't you just give up and curse God? And so <laughs> that, that story I relate a lot to. And sometimes God takes us on a road that just simply is not the easy road. And... I could have said, you know what, God, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And there were moments, there were moments, but in the midst of all of that, God said, but if you fight this fight, if you continue to walk this out, I have something greater on the other side for you. And I was just reading some of my old journals the other day and like just writing down, like I would stay up night during the night, like when, when Corey wasn't um, living with me and stuff like that. I would be up through the night just praying for him and writing down the things that I felt the Holy Spirit tell me and just things like that. And I was reading through some of that and just reminded how often I heard God in the sense that you, you have something that I have prepared. I'm preparing something for you. And I was going to try not to, to get emotional with this, but some of the things that are happening right now in our lives is truly that prophecy over us being fulfilled. And I just see how God brings you through the fire and brings you out the other side. And I believe that if God didn't call me to walk the road I've walked that it wouldn't I wouldn't have had the strength to do it do you know what I'm saying and also it's not that God forced me to do this it was just that he said if you do this I have something big for you on the other side and I, I like seeing the man that Corey is today like right now like eh, it just is honestly absolutely mind-blowing like I said I'm not going to tell his story and at some point I think he will <laughs> tell his story even on this platform but like it is just mind-blowing to see who he was and where he's where he's been and where God is bringing him and where he is now and the fight that he's had, you know, I've had my own fight, but he's had his own fight. And, and when I say fight, I'm talking about like spiritual warfare. And like I said, a lot of this stuff, there is going to be some controversy, controversial thoughts about all of this, but I know what I believe and I know where I stand. So that's all that matters. But we truly ha do not fight fight. We do not fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and powers that are so far beyond earthly things. And I think when we can grasp that, especially being a loved one of someone going through addiction, infidelity. I'm going to I'm going to kind of keep saying that infidelity thing because I think that's a part of our story that would be the deal breaker for a lot of people. And so standing through that and standing for a marriage and realizing that that in itself is an addiction and it's something that people don't talk about a lot because they, it's a hard, it's a hard subject. And it's something that I probably will talk about a bit more, um, here on my channel. I don't know. It like, I have so many things I like to do and you all know that between my cooking and canning and housekeeping and all of those things and I'm just really asking God where he wants me, what he wants me to share here on my channel and what 
you all need to hear. If there's something that is encouraging to you, I want to be that person to bring that to you if you need it. Anyways, little rabbit trail. So I chose to stay when God brought this to me. And like I said, it was more than once where different things would happen. And then I would have to come back and say, okay, God, like, this is what's happening. What should I do? <laughs> because I can ask people all day long, but the bottom line is, is I want to live my life to honor what God wants in my life. And God would again come back to me and say, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I really feel like I need to read a verse right now. I'm going to read it. No one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down, give up his own life for his friends. And I remember that moment when I read that verse and I applied it to our situation. And I was like, if I truly love Corey, then I will be willing to lay down things that most people would say, you, you have the right to do this. You have the right to do that. But lay down my emotions, lay down my um, my desires in some sense and just give them over to God and be like, you know what? You've got this. You are taking care of me. And in that moment when I started doing that and I started saying, okay, God, here's everything. Here's my pain. Here's my sorrow. Here's my heartbreak. Here's the heart wrenching situations. Here's this. Here's that. God was able to to start to heal my heart in the midst of things. And I see how, like even leading up to where we are right now, God was preparing me to have a way, a path to healing. Because sometimes when we're in a situation where there is constant pain, when things are done against you, when things are difficult and it's not just like a one-time scenario and then you know you say sorry and the other person says sorry and you move on or you like don't see that person you have this cut off closure all of that um it's easier to just kind of like okay I, I you know get your healing and move on but when you are in a situation where it is ongoing that is something that that's that's a ta like I don't know if taboo is the right word, but that's a really 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 hard subject because in our world we want to remove ourselves. I just um, heard Milena Cinciati talk about this on one of her videos. If you guys don't follow her, really love her videos. Um, but she was talking about how we often are like asking God to remove us from a situation, and sometimes. Sometimes God says, but if you stay, I have something on the other side for you. But if you stay, there's something awaiting you. There's a treasure that if you walk away, it's not that you won't be blessed. It's not that you won't, you know, be in God's hands, but you might miss out on something that he has planned for you. So I'm going to go back to this thing of this path. So God taught me that with pain, with sorrow, with heartache because you can't control what the other person is doing in your life but you can create a path of healing and so there was times where I would go up that path and I would get my healing and I would have my grounding and then you know sometime later another thing would happen and I'd be like okay and you know you have the initial wave of pain and you have the initial like I need to deal with whatever's going on because if I don't, you're going to come into unforgiveness. You're going to come into bitterness and ultimately you're going to end up hurting your own heart by allowing those things in. So I would come back to God and be like, okay, I need to go back up the path of healing and come back to you again. And in reality, like even if it's not coming from one person, you're going to end up with pains in life. We don't live in a pain-free world. You know, we live in a world with evil, with sin, with things that will affect us. And so understanding that way to come back to God, to come back to the Holy Spirit and say, I've got this going on. I have an open wound here and I need you to cover me and I need you to heal me. And the more you practice going up that path, the more you find that it's easier and quicker 
to go up that path. And I see that even now, like, because there's times where with the process that we've been through, there's times where something will come up about the past that I didn't know about. All right, my battery died. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Um, or something will occur that triggers me because obviously being on the opposite end of a marriage where you've got a lot going on, you've got things that happen that will trigger. So having a method and having a way to go back to God and to gain your healing, especially in a quick manner that you're not going through healing for years and years and years and years and years and years and not being able to thrive in life and not being able to function in life and enjoy life. And so that is what I realized that through some of those difficult years, God was teaching me like, when you come out of this, it's not going to be picture perfect. There's still going to be things going on. There's still going to be times where you have a trigger. You, yeah, just something will happen that's kind of out of like Corey and I's control. And what will it take to get back to that place where you are grounded, you have faith, you have peace. Peace is a big one. Um, because I would take peace over happiness any day. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about that healing aspect because, you know, with my story, it's easy to, for me to say about, you know, God, this is where I felt God leading me. This is what steps I felt he told me to take. But a lot of people will say, but what about, what about all the pain? What about infidelity? What about alcoholism? What about substance abuse? You know, what about all of those things? Like those things don't just happen with no one having some bruises coming out. <laughs> so talking about that healing process is very, very important. And I, at some point, I'm not going to go into great detail because I feel like I'm already I've got so much going on in this video, but at some point, I think I would love to have a video where I talk about the topic of healing and what it takes for healing because there are, when it's stuff that is ongoing, especially ongoing subjects or ongoing situations, that is a whole nother ball game than having a specific hurt that happened and then, you know, going from there. So all of that to say, how Corey and I are doing now, we are doing so good. Like, if I can say one thing, I am just absolutely amazed at the man that I'm married to and um, who he is for me. And I think the beauty of it is, is that through all of the years of trial and heartache and all of those things, I was that person that stood there for him and was there kind of no matter what and chose to be his rock in some sense, not totally, but in some sense and how the season of life that we are in right now, like, I get so emotional about it because he's being that for me. Um, because, like I said, you know, there's triggers, there's things that happen that remind me of something from the past. And he's right there to remind me of my value and to remind me of who I am and who I am to him. It's just, it's like... It's so beautiful and to see who he is to his children and to see the choices that he is making to protect what we have um, cultivated and what we have um, healed in some sense. And of course there's always more healing and there's always more growth that can happen. But I just marvel at the love and the protection that he has over me as his wife and just the days that you know he will say thank you thank you so much for loving me so unconditionally and just being able to kind of be on the other side and I think I mentioned that a little bit in my um, life update video is being on the other side um, kind of feeling like we're 
coming on down <laughs> off the mountain on the other side of our lives and to be able to see some of that golden treasure on the other side that God had promised me for so many years. So now that I've talked a little bit about that, I'm gonna kind of slide into the next thing I wanna talk about, talk about and then I'll see if I can wrap up a few more questions you guys had. So another component to my life and it, this has affected YouTube a lot in my life in the last little while. But I have had some health issues going on. And I know I've mentioned them a little bit in the past. Um, but I feel like particularly this year, those health issues kind of came to a head. And it was like, I have to make a decision on how I want to treat this and how I want to kind of proceed from here. And Corey's been a really big part of this too and kind of helping me navigate what to do with it. And it's all gonna make a lot of sense with what I just said also. Um, but I struggle, or I have problems amongst a few others, but I have problems with adrenal fatigue. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna do it real fast because I'm not gonna go into some scientific whatever. So adrenals are a organ, I think they're an organ, they would be considered an organ, an organ that sits on top of your kidneys. And they produce something called cortisol. Cortisol is the thing when you wake up in the morning, you are supposed to feel awake. As you go through the day, your cortisol levels drop and you get sleepy and you go to sleep. So what can cause adrenal fatigue is severe stress, which obviously <laughs> with my life and everything that we've walked out and all of that plays a massive part in it. Being a single parent for a while, um, being a, a, the sole provider, you know, through those years, all of those things, it just has taken a toll. And so when your adrenals are not functioning properly, it affects a lot of other things because the job of your adrenals is to help you handle stress. It's what helps you causes your brain to make decisions like your fight and flight instincts they're involved with your adrenals um like i said i'm not going to go scientific here i'm just giving you in simple words so being a mom being a wife being a homeschool mom being a youtube owner or a channel owner here on youtube like all of those things take a toll it's a lot it's a lot on my plate my plate is very full has been very very full um especially through difficult years so what has brought this to a head and what has happened this year is i was getting to the point where i actually realized that coffee was masking like 90 percent of my problems like i was literally living off of coffee living this is a decaf coffee and it's a special treat because i'm do because i snuck out of the house to go do this but i so rarely ever get coffee like a typical day for me was wake up crawl to the coffee maker and make my coffee and literally drink coffee all day long i would drink so much coffee just to stay like awake like i know that sounds crazy but if you are somebody that deals with this you know exactly how i feel and then I would get to the point at like 10 o'clock at night where I had drank so much coffee all day I couldn't sleep <laughs> and like the cycle would start the next day and then on top of it this year I started getting like these weird episodes where I would get like really really dizzy and like basically all I wanted to do was lay down and close my eyes and they would come out of the blue like I wouldn't have one for even a few weeks and then all of a sudden I'd have one and then three days later I have another one and all of this stuff so we managed to figure out that it was the coffee it was it uh, I think that a lot of those episodes were linked to caffeine addiction and just being on way too much caffeine so i cut out caffeine and that detox was i should have vlogged that honestly i should have like done a whole thing on my coffee detox because um cory was very supportive 
<laughs> just because of the own detoxes he's had to go through and he was like you can do it like you're all right and he would be like just go sleep like if you can't handle stuff i'll take care of everything he's been amazing at taking care of me um and so that had to happen the coffee detox had to happen first and so now i am on like a i'm doing it naturally i'm doing it without medication but i am on a like adrenal re rebuild kind of thing because my adrenals were just blatantly not fun functioning at all and when they're not functioning you're not creating any cortisol you're so tired um, and or you'll have spikes of rent like cortisol and then you'd be awake at night Which was the other thing that was happening to me is that even after I got off the coffee Suddenly I would wake up at like 1 in the morning and be awake for hours And so obviously that was not okay either. So I just had a lot of like crazy Stuff going on. So I'm on I'm doing a natural adrenal aid regimen um, I make a certain adrenal a drink, which I want to share with you guys. It's a yellow drink. It's really really good um, I try to drink that like twice a day just different things. I'm not going to go into major details but between that and also cutting out stress Making decisions for things that are causing stress in my life and Corey's been very very helpful with that just like wanting me to cut back on anything that's over stressing me <laughs> so that stuff has made such a difference compared to several years ago when things were not okay so having him there to take care of me and to be so incredibly sweet and just to make me create a space for me to physically heal to physically um regain like some of the things i've lost has been so amazing um and then on top of that i'm also eating a very um low inflammatory diet so i do eat a lot of things that are kind of keto related just because sugar and gluten um inflame my body like crazy stress my body really really badly um and i've done some of that through the years but now it's more serious now it's more like okay you have to do something about this. It's not just going to like go away, which is what I usually do. I'm kind of like one of those when the like light goes on on my dashboard on my car. I'm like, well, it hasn't broken yet. So we'll just keep going. <laughs> and Corey's like, why are you telling me? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, ha so doing all of those things. So you're going to see even in some of my meal preps that I am prepping some food that is specifically for me. And a lot of that has to do with low sugar and uh, gluten-free. I do do some dairy, even though dairy is something that can inflame you it can be inflammatory um i just do some cheese and stuff just to like get by because i'm not able to have some of the other stuff um but i don't like drink milk or anything like that so uh, you'll so if you're watching my meal preps and you're thinking about the stuff i'm saying that is why what some of my thought process is with some of that um so that being said, that is why also I have had a lot of gaps in my YouTube upload schedule or like history in the last couple of months is because there has been times where I have simply been incapable of like filming and uploading and all of that stuff and I've just had a lot of struggles with it. So all of that to say, I am feeling a lot better I'm having a lot of trial and error with my eating. I'm writing down like everything I'm eating so that like if I wake up the next day and I'm like, oh, like I, whatever I ate is not, I'm not okay. Then I can kind of rule that out or else change something if I need to. So that's currently where I'm at right now. Like I said, I'm following holistic advice um, on how to treat this and just walking it out and all of that so when you see me either not upload or maybe something be a little bit different that is 100 what it's related to right now is just trying to 
learn how to not overstress my body and my mind because my mind's connected to my body obviously that's all connected and just kind of chill out trying to take life a little bit simpler obviously i'm homeschooling so i have that priority in life and all of that so we're gonna get back to some questions now but i wanted to talk a little bit about that because it will be something i'll probably will continue on talking about in the future so um along with talking about Corey and stuff a question is how often do you have date nights and how do you create time for each other so we are extremely time oriented people um I don't know if you know the love languages but we both have most people have two pro um dominant love languages and we both have that in our two dominant love languages so spending time together is something that we do often and are very good about prioritizing it Corey is actually very very good about prioritizing it um i told him not that long ago like how he will even recognize me getting stressed out or whatever and he's generally like hey let's go get dinner like and he makes sure we have a babysitter and all of that so our time and date nights and all of that are very regular. In fact, probably more regular than most normal, not normal, what's the word? Most average <laughs> relationships. Um, we like go out for dinner at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, um, just him and I. We uh, put the kids to bed and then we'll order in like some kind of appetizers or something like that. We find TV shows we like to watch together. We watch football together. That's something that we really enjoy doing. Um, or, or baseball or hockey, really. Um, I like, I like, I'm not a sporty person, but I like watching sports a lot. And he's trying to get me, he had me set up with fantasy football. If you guys don't know what that is, it's just a game that's related to football this year. And so he's trying to like, get me to understand that since I have my own team and everything so <laughs> um but so we really do a lot together we I got golf clubs this year we go um we haven't started but I would ride along golfing and now I just got my own golf set of golf clubs so I want to see if I can golf a little bit um but we go sh you know shopping um we've been kind of starting to do some grocery shopping like he'll go with me which is i love that because having three children and you like the experience of the trip of getting out of the house but then you get there and you're like this is a little crazy with three children <laughs> so um we like with his business uh he is a fence builder and does like general construction so i will go on the job with him um he helps me with stuff around the house like sometimes if i'm getting ready to film something he'll help me with cleaning up or you know whatever we're gonna do um and i know you guys have seen him in the background of like meal preps and stuff like that um but yeah, so we, like, date nights, like, I don't know, we're, actually, Corey just said that this, like, yesterday or the day before, he said something about, like, we're always honeymooning, we're always date nighting, like, that's our lives now, and, and it's kind of true, like, we always pick each other over everybody else, and we just make time, and, or we live a life of, centered around prioritizing our relationship, and I think, that is why we make so much time for each other. Somebody asked about Christmas um, or like holidays just because years past they've been difficult with things and we are so excited for this Christmas. Like I can't even express it. Like we are so excited. I know Corey and I keep talking about it just how like we know that this Christmas is going to be so amazing and so different and just exciting. So um yeah, so this holiday we are very excited for. So, can you show your freezer and how much food you keep in it? So, I have my freezer in my fridge, and I actually have three deep freezers. They are not big. They're small deep freezers. I'm more of the type of person that likes having small deep freezers, um, because big deep freezers, for kind of two big reasons. One, I don't think I could manage to not lose stuff and have stuff be freezer burnt in a large freezer, uh, deep freezer. And then two, um, if you 
like say you're getting to the end of the season and only half of your freezer is full then you're running a lot of energy that you don't need to be running if you have multiple small freezers then you know you can kind of condense things and turn off a freezer which is very helpful so i will probably show my deep freezers in the tour that i do of my cellar and like all of our home canned goods um and all of that stuff because um we do a lot of canning so which you all ha have kind of picked that up but um yeah so i'll show the freezers whenever i do that okay do you have plans to buy land and build i got this question a couple of times um along with the question about having more kids which i'll get to that in a second um but Corey, probably like twice a month <laughs> is always looking at stuff um we go back and forth we go back and forth between like really wanting to buy and also maybe just waiting like another year or two so i don't know it's in the balance you guys will have to wait and see like what comes up we did look at a house um not that long ago and I, I don't know we the answer is i don't know and the other thing too is we do lean a bit more towards buying a house a structure that we could potentially like remodel um and versus buying land and building um just because i i love the idea of old houses a lot like i would love a farmhouse um but i don't know I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at I don't know. It's it's in the air. We're thinking about stuff. Um, we are really happy with where we're at. But there isn't much of a yard there. Which I've said that before. But like we'll see. We'll just see. And Corey just keeps saying God will have something for us. It's just going to it's going to come to us. Whatever's going to happen. And I'm like yeah I know. Which I'm more of the planner type. So I just have to trust God and trust him. And let's follow the way we'll leave it <laughs> um so the other question since i just mentioned it is about are you gonna have more kids so as of right now the answer is no but i do get baby fever I'm not gonna lie and but the answer is i don't know <laughs> um and again just trusting god with all of that stuff and whatever um and so I feel like these are such funny questions sometimes because like you don't always have the answers. Like nobody has their life completely planned out like every single month, every single year is going to be this. It's going to be that. We all have ideas and goals and things like that, but it's never something set in stone. So some of these questions make me kind of giggle because um, it, it would be like somebody asking you that question, you know, um, like if I asked you watching this are you what are you going to be doing next year you don't always have the answer to that and i had some questions about budget meals and like dealing with all of the prices that are crazy right now and that is really my goal and my drive to showing you guys how we eat and how we do a lot of our meal prepping and things like that because it is wild how you can buy something in bulk like a bag of potatoes for example because i can potatoes um the price per pound for like buying a 50 pound bag of potatoes and processing them and doing them yourself versus buying just like a five pound bag at the store is insane like the last time i checked it was less than 50 percent so that would mean you know that's how big of a discount you're getting just by buying a larger quantity of something and processing it yourself. So that is my goal with doing the budget um, meal preps and stuff is to be showing you guys that there are alternative ways to feeding your families healthy, wholesome meals without breaking the bank. And just it's really not that difficult. It's a skill. It's a skill. But it's not that difficult once you have that skill mastered or you learn about that skill. It's like anything else in life. All right, so I had some questions on planners, cookbooks, bullet journals. I'm just seeing another one here. Um, and wanting me to talk more about that. So maybe I will do that at some point. I love, love, love bullet journaling. If you guys didn't know, um, I used to. I've tried so 
many methods of planning and bullet journaling is just the best and um i have lots of cookbooks i can recommend i also have um a certain way that i write my own recipes in a cookbook um so that's something that maybe we can do at some point there's so many questions you guys and i feel like like this video has got to be over an hour long hopefully it's not two hours long um <laughs> and i want to keep going but what i'm gonna do i am going to have you guys put questions in the comments of this video for my next q a um or chatty video whatever we're gonna call these um, <laughs> I, that, I knew I would need some silence and that's why I ended up in the car today because I was like, you know what? I am just going to go get myself a coffee. We're going to do it this way instead of trying to navigate between three very chatty little girls. So, <laughs> um, there is one question I'm seeing here that I want to give this tip because it has to do with decorating and it said what would you recommend someone on a strict budget to do to get the boho look on a fraction of the cost and one thing i can highly highly recommend is paint your walls white and everything else in your room is going to look totally different um and i know that everybody might be get really tired of the white walls and in fact when i went to paint the living room Corey was like Please do something besides wait. <laughs> so I painted the living room gray. If you guys are on, um, subscribe to my home channel, then you know that. Um, but I recommend painting your walls white, even if you end up changing the wall color. Paint it up. Paint your walls white, and then look at your furniture in the room and think about how it looks with the white, because that makes such a huge difference your furniture and the things and i don't even know if this is quote unquote boho because i don't even think my style is like super boho it's all kinds of things it's like farmhouse a little mid-century modern and a little boho just whatever i like um but i think a lot of times people look at pictures and most of the time when they see the boho look or even the farmhouse look the walls are white and so I think it gives you a good base and that's actually what I used to do whenever um like all the houses we've ever lived in I think I painted all, all white um to just kind of get a grasp on my style is to start out with a blank canvas I know it sounds a little cliche but it's just the best advice I have for you so all of that to say I'm going to tell you guys leave questions in the comments of this video um, because I will do another video like this because I feel like a lot of the stuff I said today is going to bring on a lot more questions and a lot more just comments things that we can talk about and I'm I'm really looking forward and I know I said this a few months ago but I mean I'm in even another I'm in another season even now than I was even a couple months ago and I'm excited to kind of reconnect with my audience, reconnect with you guys that have been here since the difficult days and have followed my story even whenever I've taken step backs, steps backs. Okay, it's time to stop. I'm starting to have some problems talking. <laughs> um, when I've taken steps back, you guys have been so supportive and so loving from the behind your side of the screen and i just appreciate that so much and i may even come back to instagram i've been debating about it that has been a huge component um i've gotten like for the most part i literally had to download the social media apps on my phone um to read off those questions because i have pretty much made my smartphone into a dumb phone and like have only used it for calling and things like that um because being on youtube facebook instagram all of those things i realized how much that was even playing into a part of my adrenal fatigue and feeling tired it just drains you and being on social media too much can do that so um yeah so thank you for respecting my privacy a little bit i guess is the right word like whenever i've taken steps back and gone through different seasons and things like that and i just appreciate you all so much and I'm excited for this season of life that God has us in because it is a season of abundance and it's something to be excited about. And I am ready to start sharing like my journey a little more than what I have. So 
anyway, I feel like I'm saying goodbye to a friend now and I'm excited to hear you guys, your just thoughts in the comments, leave them in the comments. I will be reading through them and responding to them. And I think I'm actually going to go home and make this video live. So you guys will be seeing it pretty much the same day. I can't, just can't be more grateful for the subscribers that I have had through a lot so anyways i will see you guys in my next video